Yeah, yeah, our parenting guest today is Adibola Adifioye. She is an advanced certified autism specialist. Now we're talking about how to get acceptance for children with special needs. It's great to have you. You are welcome. Thank you very much. Now, I know you have a very a great passion for children with special needs. That's all you are about. Now this is very, how to gain acceptance. Are you talking about acceptance from, uh, from the outside, from people, from the general public, or are you talking about acceptance in the family what, what acceptance are we, are we talking about here now? I'm talking about both. Okay, both. Because the family has to accept first mm. before you can transcend it to the society. Because mm. if, if your immediate environment isn't accepting, there's no how you will be able to do it to the larger society. So mm. it has to, one has to come before the other. It is not easy for parents. When they, they, when they have a special kid or when they find out that they have a special kid, it seems like all, you know, it, it, there's that feeling of, oh, why me? There's that depression and all of that. Let's start from there. Yeah. How, do we, how, how do such parents pick up, uh, you know, that responsibility to parent such a child? Okay, yeah, so basically we would say that the, the parents have to accept first. And it's, like you said, it's not easy. It's not an easy thing. It's, sometimes some people, it takes a while. Some, like, some months, some even years. Some it never ever yeah, happens. Yeah, some it never even happens. And then, or sometimes the father might accept, the mother might not accept, or the mother might accept, or the father might. So it's, it's, it works for different people in different ways. But what we always advise is no matter, the longer you take in accepting, the longer it takes for the child to, to be able to do things he or she can do because like we always say, every child can learn. Every child can do things. We just need to find the right way, the right method of teaching that child. Mm. So it's, we, what we always do also is we try to um, emphasize the child's strengths because every, no matter the kind of challenge the child has, there's a strength in that child. So we mm. try to highlight the strength of the child. When the parents begin to see the strengths, okay, all hope is not lost. There are actually good, there are some things that this child can do. So when they begin to see that, they get a bit, should I say encouraged, or they get a bit, um, what word would I use now? They see that there's light at the end of the tunnel. tunnel. Maybe, yeah. Now let's talk about cases that you might have come across. What kind of strengths do, have you ever seen in some of these children with special needs? Wow, Ch we've come to realize that children, they're very creative. They're very artistic. Mm. Some of them have gifted in music. Some mm. of them sports and all that. So it's, and then they're very good with their hands. I once had mm -hmm. a client where, when, before I met the parents, the child used to tear paper. Any paper the child sees, he just tears. They couldn't understand why. As far as the parents were concerned, they felt he was messing the house. But upon studying and getting to meet the child, I realized the child was drawing patterns with his hands. Hmm. So we're like, okay, can we, how can, and then the child was young, so we couldn't send him to like a, a, a tailoring school, or should I say, or a partnering school at the beginning. So we needed him, him to go to regular school. So by the time he was six, he was, he, his patterns were more defined. So we sent him to a pattern drafting school. Hmm. Yeah, so he, he, right now he does things with the system because he learns how to work with the, um, with the computer and all that. But then he could, he could actually tear out a pattern, a dress pattern with his hands, with his fingers. So. You know, this, this wows me. I mean, having to see something like that and find out that, oh, there's something that was in this kid's mind that was trying to come together and trying to form together. Oh, yeah. There is something. Now, it's a, it's a bit more challenging when it comes to the general public. Yeah acceptance from and by the general public. public yeah. How do you advise that uh, this one is, is, is tackled? I like, one thing is education. You need to ed educate the general the public. public. Yeah. And that is like, what we are doing here, educating you. That people with special needs are not, uh, they are not, they're not, they're not just spiritual, it's not one thing and all of that, you know, the misconception yeah. that, yeah, okay, so, yeah, yeah. so how do we know? And like I said, education. Now, when you have it, when you realize you have a child with a need, you need to get every, every information you can on that child so that when someone sees him or her outside, you can explain what the condition is. You can tell them it's not contagious, it's not going to fly from my child to yours, and then... Because of the society we live in, we're a very religious society. What mm. we don't understand, we spiritualize. Very so true. So we, we think that maybe because a child has autism and he's not, or has ADHD, because he's not settled, we are quick to think that maybe he's, he has a demon mm. or something is wrong, you know. But when you, when you are educated, when you are informed about what is wrong with your child, you can tell the next person. Maybe when you, because you know how it is when you see a child um, behave differently, you, you see people look at them like, 
giving eye comments, as in eye yeah. gazes and all that. So when you see that kind of thing, you just smile. I'm like, no, don't worry. There's nothing to worry about. And then you educate the child, mm. the, 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 person. the person. And w one thing we know is that knowledge, pro there's light in knowledge. When you pass knowledge around, you see the person asking more questions. Because I always say, Nigerians generally, we're actually a caring people when we know the truth. So when you explain, and they get more empathic. They're like, oh, wow, so how do you manage? What is wrong? What happened? How did, you know? So they get more interested. Yeah. Yeah, there's a paradigm shift. Yeah, that's the now, word. Now, uh, when it's, there's also a case of these children being bullied. This is where authorities, maybe in school, maybe in places where they are, uh, maybe where they go to a place like a park, a leisure center or something, and all of that. What can, now this has to be maybe involved with authorities of places like this. What can be done to ensure that these children are given the best shot that they have at a normal life? Okay, now let me give an example of school bullying. I had a client also that the child was going to a school and he had autism. He was nonverbal, but he was doing well. And we were like, okay, from his former school, they had accepted him. But after a while, he had, his competencies were not being harnessed where he was. So we needed to get him a new school. And the school authorities knew but they didn't inform the class students. And that's where we always explain that wherever you're taking your child, whether it's school, even if the management knows, you need to cascade the knowledge down. Not only the management, the children, the classmates need to know that there's something, there's something wrong and this is how you can help him or her. And what happened was that the child was in class but wasn't talking. You know when they talked to him, he wasn't responding because he couldn't talk. They felt he was full of himself and all that. And then one day during lunch, he was going on the corridor and they pushed him and they like really beat him. You know, when they, by the time his parents came, he was in shock and all that. He was like, he was throwing a panic attack, you know? So we mm. had to take him back and he took him back like another six months regression. We had to like start all over again, you know? And he was afraid to go to school, but we had to like keep telling the school. And that's what we explained. Like I said, we can't share enough knowledge about these things. We need to keep explaining that this, it's not this child's fault. If he's doing this, this is the reason. We ask you to be, do this, help the child. And that's why we keep saying knowledge is key. You need to pass it around. Even some, yeah, the government is trying. We, 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 at least Le I know Lagos is doing a bit and all that, but we can do better. Create awareness. Let there be signs everywhere. Like everywhere you go now, you see like fire instructions and all that. If we can do those kind of things everywhere so that every Tom, Dick and Harry can see it and have basic knowledge, basic understanding. That, okay, if you see someone behaving this way, it's not because... He's crazy. There's just something wrong. How can you help the person? You know, so we just need it to let the knowledge go all around. Let it be everywhere. Like, you know now, everybody, there's, every, there's a mask sign everywhere. If we can put those signages everywhere we go, that once you turn, if you see someone reacting to something, it's not because there's something wrong. It's just he or she needs help. You know, so it'll be better. All right. Thank you very much. It was quite uh, an enlightening one. Thank you. And uh, wishing you the best. Keep on doing the good work. Thank you doing. very much. All right. Thank you. That's it. The first lap of the show is done. Uh, we'll take this time out now and be back with the second lap.